actually. Makes good work. I just got a notification. Someone's starting a stream. All right, back again. As I slowly sneak into place here. All right, welcome back. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, let me know. I'm going to be working on uh, this hand. I uh, have done a couple other hands today um, to to the to the point where I'm satisfied with them. And we're gonna work on hand number three. Um, and if by some miracle, I can do a, f a fourth one here, um, I might just have to dance or something if, if, if it ends up working out. All right, first things first. Um, dipping in here, getting a little uh, Walnut oil gel, and I kind of rub into the area in and around where I'm going to work. That just creates um, as though I'm working back into oil. I've got my underpainting, which you know is very rough, but gives us the, the general idea of the lights, darks, and mid mid range values, and. Uh, and then today we're going to really build upon the top of those. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of my black here, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Um, A little bit of thinner. I didn't like how that was feeling. Okay, diving in. So, a few of these areas around the uh, the space which I'm working on, I'm gonna fill in. Look at those nice rich, dark. I'm listening in the sounds of my neighborhood right now. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? Um, so here we are. So these shadows are pretty dark. On the other side of the thumb. The shadows end about right there. Um, blocking in those Deep, deep darks. It's just how it's how I like to start. Hey, notification worked. Excellent. All right. And the rest of these kind of dark shadows are then they're, um, I don't know if, how perceptible it is there on the video. But you can see they have a little bit of a, uh, they're, they're warm anyway. Um, and so I'm gonna still make them dark, but unlike the blacks that I just kind of laid in, like I can, I can make out just a little bit of a lighter value. Um, that has something in it, and so I'm gonna 
kind of pay pay attention to that. And I've got my kind of warm uh, dark right here. That is not a complete uh, black, but let's see phone call. I don't know if it's important. Let's see. I don't think it's important. Because you know how that goes. All right. If you were calling me and I just said you weren't important, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. It was no one that I knew. Uh, or at least I didn't have the number pro programmed in. So. Filling these in. Might have been another one of my, uh, one of the people that I was gathering bids from for my mini windshields. <laughs> Sorry if you didn't get the, uh, the job, I apologize. Hey, but I have three new windshields. That's the exciting part. How's it going? Hello. We're up, we're live. What's happened? How's that first day of school? It's so boring. What? Did, did they Online just? Online school is super boring. <laughs> Here you go, see, I made these. Okay, sweet. These are extra. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I'm learning all about marketing and stuff. Okay, so, man, day one. What's, what's the takeaway from day one? Um, it's more expensive to get a new customer than it is to keep an old one. Ah. And then a bunch of vocabulary that I don't remember. Like selling concept, a product concept, marketing concept, customer satisfaction. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited at all? Um, I'm excited to actually do stuff yeah. instead of just vocabulary. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's important to know the terms. But I just want to like edit something. <laughs> do you want to, if you want to edit something, do you want to hop on and uh, create a, a thumb for this, for this new hand that I'm working on? Can you contract me? I'm a school student. <laughs> you're, in, you're an intern. I'm an intern. <laughs> what do you think? The, <laughs> That's what I'm doing for Brian. Yeah. Intern. Yeah, because I can't take the money. The intern. Unemployment. The intern. Everything else. What do you want as your thumbnail? Let's see. Um, let's see. Let's get uh, a, a nice. Let me. We get a nice uh, pinky color. I said pinky. Maybe we'll actually paint the pinky. Um, so maybe we can be doing that. Okay. God, you're so quick. You only gave me one chance. <laughs> come on, come on, marketer. Cords. Yeah, well, marketers take one chance to do things. <laughs> hey, just so everyone knows, we're really proud of uh, of Sean and and how he's doing. I'm going to school, bro. He's getting it done. He's changing things. Changing the world. I mean, not yet, but that's the, that's the idea. Or at least just my world. Yeah, but that computer probably will be back in on your desk. 
Oh no, this is all I'm doing. I'm really, because uh, I have more school work. Well, not really. There's not really a whole lot to do. I mean, it is the first day. Did you, that's usually first day is just to get the syllabus. Yeah. No. And they're like. We have like the first week chapter. Uh, All of my classes have chapter one modules huh? for this week. And so you kind of just get them done whenever. Right. I also have really bad ADHD, so I'm trying to stay focused. Oh, too bad everything is on the screen. Yeah. Just just pick it up, man. It's all good. It's it's movable. That's uh, it's really David's monitor. I mean, where's the live stream going? Hey, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> we 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 definitely uh, we were hitting um, the the uh, like everything was kind of falling off from from earlier. It, I mean, tw twenty days ago. Clearly was when we started doing the streams uh, because the the overall watch hours were starting to drop um, like 10 hours a day. So, so I think, uh, I mean, I think I get it. I, I guess here's the most encouraging thing about it. Um, it can happen, right? I mean... It, it it is something that can be accomplished, I guess. Uh, it just takes the oh, we're gonna get back and then do that thing again. Let me tell you about marketing. It's, yeah. I don't really understand. <laughs> because I'm only on my first day. But if I know anything, it's that it costs more money <laughs> to add a new customer than it does to keep it one. How about in the like in the fine art realm? You... On my first day, you're asking me if I have any insight into the <laughs> fine art film marketing system. Well, let's yeah. wait for like week two for that. Okay. I'm not going to say that I don't, but I'm also going to say that it's a small possibility. All right. So now we're, it's, it's all, it's all laughs around here. We're having a good time. Uh, but if you, if you're watching this and you're like, Hey, talk about what you're doing, man. Um, I am, uh, slowly building up, uh, some of the, uh, major, major color shapes, the major players. And I'm bouncing around. I still haven't moved to the light, lighter values, except when I did that one just for the thumbnail. Um, and, uh, you know, but I'm trying to get just a few of these things in here and there. And, of course, said it earlier but any questions at all dr drop them off be glad to help Sean I was still using if you hadn't seen it yet I was still using the enunciation template for the for oh, the, for the th thumbnail yeah just to as in the ease of whatever streamlining our processes are they ever going to talk about that Part of me that really likes this stage um, where there are times where I could I could almost just kind of leave it and say, hey, you know, I mean, not not in this case, but I'm like, I, I like just a little bit of description. 
but description that still works. So you, you did an online class? Uh, yeah. Three out of my four classes are online. And those are probably the harder ones? Uh, yeah, especially since they don't explain anything very well. I mean, I didn't even know what my, um, my email was for WSU Tech. Nobody ever told me that. So it took me like an hour and a half to figure that out. So that was like half of my day, just trying to get logged in. I still can't figure out something else. Then I came up here, because Sierra's over. she feel better today? Yeah, uh, she seems to be. Good. This one uh, has way many more um, lighter lighter values going for it. So we are the the hand coming out of the sleeve, not so much, uh, but this is very light. Templates flattened. Um, the template itself. Uh huh. Annunciation template, Photoshop file. The PSD file. Yeah. Blast. Well, I'll tell you what. I've got a MacBook Pro downstairs with the most current. Photoshop. I'm gonna go in there and see if I can figure out how to build one. Where did that come from? Sierra. Cool. But hopefully I'm gonna get my Hubble grant and my TAA, I'll be getting my Pro 2. Nice. Okay, it's all good. Agnes said watching your stream definitely makes me want to go paint too soon. <laughs> Okay. Because huh. I'm in school for that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Uh, Bye. David, would you be kind enough to close Photoshop?
Okay. Back at it. This is your first time watching. Uh, I've got um, a whole painting I did essentially from start to finish um, up, up on the channel. You can view that at any time and um, hopefully glean something from it. Uh, similarly, I've got even just this, this session here, uh, the colors that I mixed on the palette were all made uh, in the previous visitation series. So that video released yesterday and today um, we continue to work through uh, sections, uh, mostly focusing on the hands. So this time I did it totally backwards. Uh, so if you happen to see the enunciation series, You'll know that I worked uh, for, to toward the hands uh, and the face, uh, but this time I'm doing the exact opposite. Especially with painting, I think sometimes it's good to change up the workflow, see what happens, and see what see what you can achieve. For me, it causes me to have to think of it in a different way. Sometimes it's frustrating. So on the kind of block in time, I'm, I'm mostly trying to cover up my underpainting layer, which is, is nearly there. Here's that, or not, yeah, well, underpainting there, yes, but also the, the, uh, just the ground layer that, that is, as long as it's there, it's gonna kind of steal a little bit of that, um, Um, the good space that can be can be made. Kind of overdid it with this red in here. I mean, it is reflecting, um, but probably not to that intense of a degree. Although it might be fine once the 
so the little other layers get put in. I kind of break out the smaller brush when I want to start working on some of the edges. And I think with hands, it's really, it's really important to get little, you know, all the areas between fingers and there's going to be these warm reflective points and Kind of looking at those carefully, putting them in. It does a lot for your for your piece. I didn't easel upgrade at some point. Let's get a little bit of shaky shaky. Thanks, Agnes. Yeah, those are. This is the f uh, this is the fun stage, I, you know. I I don't necessarily <laughs> want to leave. Um, it's a little 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 looser and um, kind of those main treating each finger as as its own little plane, not really truly building it out yet. It's a little too red. It's okay. I'll come back. Definitely want it warm, but not that red. It's a little cooler. I've been, I need to start making it so warm and pinky. It's not really, it's not really that. So I can bring in some of my greens. What I really want that I seem like they don't have right now is a nice little A little more blue, cooler blue. I'm just gonna mix up this lighter, cooler blue. That's what I want. To... It's just not quite as warm in there as I had it. big volume here. This value change is not quite as strong as I had it. And you can see immediately that doesn't feel as round. Um, 
just that change on that value in that one spot, you know, because we're all we're all always thinking whether we realize it or not that you know light is moving across here, and so the value that it casts, the the shadow, um, all all matters, and um, depending on how we depict it, uh, ultimately gives it. Tells it tells us tells our eye what's happening there in space right there. So and I'm gonna this time I am gonna have to get a little specific in this area. Um, try to. Uh, Kind of avoid that when I can, especially because you know, yeah, there's times I don't really feel like doing the work, but also it just there's something when the hand to me is just a little unfinished uh, and energetic with brushwork, it still feels like it's in motion, um, and I just don't want to lose that. Part of me also that just really appreciates the big volumes, and I'll I'll spend way more time on them. A little volume like a finger. <laughs> it's like my eye doesn't make out the bigger shifts as well, and so I end up sort of shying away from it until the inevitable. Like okay, you've got to deal with this. This is a hand I really want to get right though, so I'll probably end up taking a little more time on it. It's this, looking for this plane here on the top of the finger, the pinky. I want to get that blocked in. So that we have kind of the plane facing us, the plane going back in the distance. That's the one I'm sort of focusing on right now. And finishing that out there is given given enough of that, which I'm pleased with. David, you doing all right, man? Yep. <laughs> Hearing those yawns. Mm -hmm. 
David just went to Greece uh, not too long ago. Did you guys take uh, naps midday? No. No? We, uh, we swam. Mm. We spent most of the time on the islands. So. Swam, eat, slept. Woke up islands, swam, eat, slept. That's great. Santorina and Rhodes, best islands. Huh. We only went to like five islands, so I don't know about the other islands. <laughs> Crete, too industrial. Hmm. Same with uh, some of the others. But Rhodes was cool, and so was Santorina. Santorina. Santorini. Santorini. I think eyes, I think. I don't know, man. But I'm not as cultured yeah. or well traveled as you are. I don't know. You've been to Ireland, Italy. <laughs> I've only been to Greece outside of this country. Here's the funny thing I've only been like actually spending time in other countries, mind you. Only countries that start with I. Ireland and Italy, that's it. Um, so. It's actually kind of funny. <laughs> no. I do want to go to Ireland, I do. Yeah. It seems more, and that's why I like Greece, is like when you got to the more industrial cities, it, didn't, it just didn't feel like, mm. like the smaller kind of village yep. and towns. So yep. You're like, I like this. I like seeing yep. people do their regular day. Yes. And the sad thing is like, it's all the touristified, so not it's not exactly just a small town doing their own thing. They're all yeah. They, especially roads. They said a million people come to work uh, for the summer for the tourist yeah, industry. For the tourist, and yeah. they go back. They think it's three months is their winter time. Wow. So, you have nine months of summer, pretty much, or time that it's okay, like tourists are coming, and then you go back and you don't work when you go back, and so that's their income. Um, yeah. Yeah, big fan of the smaller areas. Yes. Yes. That's, that's where my favorite were the, the small, even though they were still big, they were small. Like they, they looked, they still had the quaint feeling of mm -hmm. what you wanted, would want to see or expect. Not the city, like, oh, this is just a, a city. Like, you know. Yeah, my, mine was, um, uh, my absolute kind of both, both places in Ireland and Italy. I stayed in one spot. I didn't, I never saw all the things that people see, you know, you know when you go to those places, but I did. Just kind of live among the locals. Um, and that was really enjoyable. Okay, working working my way forward. Um, really, I'm just avoiding each one of those fingers, if I'm honest. So, <laughs> uh, okay, all right, let's let's buckle down. Let's see, here, here's the test. Someone someone should time me. See how long it takes me to uh, move away and do another part. Because I want to do something different, other than kind of buckle down and do the little detail on the fingers. points I'm kind of looking and pay attention to what the finger shape is like the, the tip of the finger what it's doing um, 
if you're if you were here earlier in the day, I was gonna obviously I'm not gonna give her purple fingernails, so you know, just one of those. I do think in Matthew though it does refer to her having purple fingernails. <laughs> Are we gonna get another thunderstorm? Thought I just did, did was that just me? Or did I feel that? Did you feel that? Was there was there thunder? Do you feel thunder? Is it like in your bum? No. <laughs> I don't know if that's thunder or a car. I don't know. I think we're gonna get another thunderstorm. Did did they say anything about rain on your car? Um. No. The big thing was uh, not like a spray wash. There's really nothing I can do. We only have two slots. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could pull two of them in. Should probably check that radar, see what's happening. See what we got coming. Okay, huh. Well, I mean, but it's not showing that, like, it's not showing that. It is cloudy in there. It's, it's getting much more dim. It is. Yeah. It has been a little overcast for the most, most of the day, and, and now it's, uh, it's really settling in. It says expect dry conditions over the next six hours. Hmm. Can you ever trust butter apps though? <laughs> and that's the question. All right, well, I should probably protect and move some cars into the garage. So if you're if you're still here, thank you. Oh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. It's like, now the sun just came out. It's, it's not showing any... Precipitation on the radar, oh. yeah. Well, not even, like, we're not even in... There is nothing near us. Well, there is, but it's, like, on the side of us, not even near where we're hmm. located right now, at 242. This is at 242. If there is something, like, coming... So he told you, moved away from it, moved to a different area, didn't take long. Just goes to show, um, I really am. Uh, I, small details, I you know, 
and I realize I think a lot of people would look at the work and say well of course you're into like small little details but you know I'm I'm looking for the major 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 players and and what's happening that's telling us how this hand sits there and how it works um, and once once I get that you know I'm out I want to be done is is Anna up is it done is is Anna up yeah okay I guess that's me. Who is it? I don't know. There's somebody here. Must be a neighbor. Well, well, friends. Uh, oh, witness. I'm uh, off to get the doorbell. I'm off to get the doorbell. I guess for a break. Yeah.
could do. <laughs> okay, here comes the storm. Is there anybody left watching? Wow, you guys are so nice. Just leaving it on. Um, the, the cars. Three new windshields put on today. It looks like we're going to get a, uh, a storm. So I was doing my, my best to prepare, pull the cars into the garage to a degree. It's a two car garage. And there's three cars. So somebody's got a. So they have four cars. <laughs> so, so anyway, somebody's got to give. Well, I was able to get the, the, the one, at least uh, over the, under the eave. That was just. <sighs> sorry. Sorry, Sean. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just picking up this thing. So I just want to make sure he's still doing Okay, I think I'm going to get started again here. Okay, back for real. <laughs> you know, if you're, you know, a work from home dad, like I am, 
sometimes you're on. Sometimes it's your it's your turn. It was my turn. Whoops. I think I bumped the easel. Not the easel, the, I guess it is an easel, but I think it's looking all right. Yep. Hey, thanks, um, uh, Art. Good to have you, if you're still here. Sorry, been out doing other things that required the, the tension. If you are here, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Utrecht person, so uh, I, I like both their brushes and uh, no, they're not paying me to say that. No, they're not giving me their product. <laughs> um, although I would certainly take it if they would. Um, but uh, no, it's... Uh, it's a Utrecht oil. I mean, most of them are, well, I don't know, what am I saying? It's kind of a hodgepodge at this point. So natural pigments, uh, Rublev oil colors here. Um, I think Utrecht, Utrecht, uh, Windsor Newton, Utrecht, uh, Sennelier, um, Utrecht, Utrecht, Utrecht. <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, it's kind of all over the place. Part, part of it is just, you know, uh, over the years painting, it seems like you're, you get more and more, uh, more and more things you accumulate, you try new stuff. And sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it works and Sometimes you go through fads and you don't have this or that anymore. Um, but on the whole, uh, I've really stuck by Utrecht through the years. Partially just, it's what I learned to use. Um, so so if you're still here or if you check back in, um, yeah, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of what I like to use. And thanks for the good word on the painting. I'm trying to trying to turn something out here anyway. See how we do it. Thanks. Glad, glad you're here. <laughs> I, I had to uh, just life stuff, you know. Got I've got the stream going, but storms rolling in, moving cars around. I don't know, you know. Um, so uh, I, I've blocked most of the stuff in. I'm I'm slowly editing a few things here and there. I want I want it to remain painterly yet uh, adequately describe. Um, you know, yes, I am going for realism, and uh, and the caliber of realism has to be there, like in, in some of my other work. Um, at the same time, though, um, you know, paint is paint, and I'm trying not to go too far because I still want it to remain. I mean a little bit of paint, a little, little painterly, a little rough, letting the human eye finish some of the forms. Um, I always find that, you know, more interesting um, anyhow, as if, as if we can, we do some of the work um, just naturally. And when that happens, you know, it's ex good stuff. It just sort of falls together and that's nice. Even like this edge here, it's like I don't even know if I want to really describe it as much as leave it sort of as it was. I think I may just carry that up just a little bit, but just kind of leave that kind of stuck together, even though, yeah, that's not really what the source reads, but I just find it a little more interesting. I'm going to take just a little bit of a warm color though, uh, you know, there's, I just want this to reflect uh, some of the light and the warmth that's coming up from the other finger, and that's just an edge choice. I mean, it was barely 
uh, dipping that in and um, letting that get a, get against here. Yep. And so that that also kind of turns it around this way. It also tells us, you know, that these two fingers are in the same vicinity as one as one another, just because some of the same color and light is is, is happening in both places. Um, make the thumb just a little redder. I think it's okay to use different uh, kinds, or I really do. Um, I, so here's, here's, uh, so what do I like about Utrecht paint? Um, I, 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 I think it's really, at this point, it's, it's purely comfort, and it's what I know. Um, and so that, for me, goes a long way, and um, you know, when, you, when you've got a groove, then you just kind of stick with it. And that's what I've done over the past 20 years. Um, and maybe somebody could change my mind. Um, but, uh, uh, so, but using different kinds, um, here's the only thing that I would recommend is to never mix uh, studio series you know there's always like a there's always like an art student quality oil paint out there and then there's like th the brand so I mean for instance the difference between if you were to buy Winsor Newton oil colors versus their Winton brand so if you buy their Winton series you're buying uh, basically their studio or their cheap um, versions of of the paint. Try not to mix those two. Try not to mix a nice quality paint with a like a studio series paint. Th th those would be the ways in which that I think it can go wrong. And not that something is going to fall apart or um, you know or that anyone would notice. I think the the big the big thing that happens is it it will take you know, a, a significant amount of paint to uh, to get the like the mixtures right. Like so, like you you might need four times as much of the studio series in a mixture as you would the regular kind of the, the high end quality um, oil color. You know, and even Utrecht has its like essentially studio series. I don't know what they call it. I'm, I'm not. I don't remember. But um, yeah. So I would just I wouldn't mix qualities if you're using use the best of the best um, in each brand case. And then uh, I I think it's fine. I don't. I've not seen any adverse effects. Um, there's only been one time or something weird happened to me, and to me it's completely inexplicable, and I still don't know why it did it. Um, but other than that, I've, I've never seen anything strange happen. It's a good question. Thank you. Keep, keep me rolling. And other people want to know that too. And I just, I forget that that's really important and helpful. I'm trying to tone that edge down just a little bit. I mean, I want that line, but I didn't want it that crazy red. I'll just soften some of the areas here. This the shadow is definitely there. And but even it, there's a little bit of reflected light under there. And again, thanks everyone for your patience earlier.
Okay, I really do need to deal with the fingertips. Obviously, we're not painting on uh, the purple uh, since I'm doing um, a historical piece sort of thing. As far as I know, it didn't happen then. I don't know. <laughs> so, so we're going to kind of try to keep it natural looking. Um, I don't try to get too detailed, um, but I do need to describe just enough. So fingertips are usually pretty warm. A, a quick look at any of ours and you can tell um, that the tips get warmer than, than the rest. Um, and, and so I'll just I'll start there. I'll start with just getting, you know, I made a little bit of a warmer uh, skin tone just so I can, these are the areas that I haven't quite filled in yet. So some of that um, ground layer is still showing through, which is not so bad, but you know, it's like around this edge, it's really, edge is really messy and I'm just going to clean it up. And sometimes I might increase the, the shadow just above. I don't, I'm not big on getting really a whole lot more accomplished in this in the hands. If anything, what I'm looking for are those really subtle changes here and there that would make the overall each little plane more interesting. Um, so that's kind of what I'm searching for as I as I hop around here. Is there something that just kind of creates a little more for the piece, and if I if I think it will, then you know this is it's a it's a hit or miss thing. Um, sometimes sometimes it's all right. Sometimes it's like whoops, wish I hadn't done it. Um, okay, that's all a little better there, a little softened. So I think what happened was um, I had some cracking uh, on, on a piece. Again, I've never seen it on a piece before. I never saw it on a piece after. I even painted over it multiple times and saw the same area crack. Uh, it, was, it was really strange. And then I scraped it all the way down to the gesso. I mean, I sanded it, scraped it, started over again, just in that one section. It did repair that section, um, me doing it over, but it also, um, but I could see even around the, some of the edges of that section, it was still just a little, uh, a little problematic. Um, but then it held and I didn't see any other changes over the course of, you know, a year or two. Strange, strange happenings. Mm. You know, cause I mean, uh, for instance, on this piece and on others, I'm using a walnut oil gel, which is probably not all that big of a deal. My thinner, which you know, I don't use a whole lot of, but you know, that's uh, lavender spike oil and linseed oil. And then I do have this Venetian medium, which I haven't cracked out and used on this painting. Um, but uh, sometimes that's in the mix too. So there's a lot of different um, things happening. I haven't seen anything react strangely. And so um, anyway, I'm hopeful that everything will be okay. Shadow just needs to come up just a little bit. It was too much following the finger. Sometimes 
there's a, there's a weird thing that can happen when there's like a perfect little shape following another shape. Uh, life just doesn't work that way. Even when I find things that are that way, I break them up because it's just a little more believable. Uh, life is, you know, if you look at the way, uh, Agnes, maybe this will be helpful. If you look at the way stars are strewn across the sky, they're, they're in weird, they're like group, grouped. Um, they're not sort of perfectly um, spaced, but yet there is like this, you know, strange way in which it's, everything's just always irregular. <laughs> Um, so finding that, making that work in, in your work is things are always irregular. It's a good thing to know. Just going to warm these up, fingertips up just a little bit. Maybe go in with, uh, my black and just clean up the edge a little bit. It's just a little messy. Especially on that one. finger that's pointed out, even though I can't make it out, I know that it's going to be more of a shadow underneath here. But not too far. That's always the key. It's always like working on it. Like, oh yeah, that's what that needs right there. And then you're like, mm, that didn't work. And then here's where like fiddling just can start to ruin some of the energy you have and some of the things that are going well. You know, that finger would be out in the light a little more so I could lighten, you know. Lighten that nail just some. Yeah, I like um, same same Agnes. I try to avoid the uh, the solvents. I mean, I'm this is just my home studio, so. Uh, Everything that I'm, uh, I've got going on in here affects everywhere else in the house, as well as you know, nothing to say for my own health. Um, so yeah, I, I think those are good decisions to make. The the least amount of exposure to that sort of stuff, the better. Probably the most toxic day in the studio is when I'm. I put down my ground layers because I just use straight. Yeah, I guess that's another point too. I use straight Gamsol uh, for my ground layers. So there's Gamsol on the bottom. There's all this other stuff everywhere else. Um, but uh, the the Gamsol and the uh, the the class the Chelsea Classical Studio. Their walnut, their lavender spike oil, um, that seemed to, that seemed to drive really well. All that's all done really well together. And you know these these marks are trying to kind of fold that uh, under just a little bit. Just about there. I've got an hour and a half. So this is, one, this is one of those things where I always got to decide what uh, what am I going to put my energy to next. I have one more hand I could try to get done, but it's one of those things that I don't want to try unless I can do it, get it done in time. So there's always the... Send a 
soften it so that was a little hard. The same here as well. This is just a little uh, camel hair brush that I might just soften some of these harder edges and kind of just keep try to keep the overall shape together. I think I'm pretty happy. I need to um, get out my mirror, take a look at it. I love I love the mirror. Um, it's so good at telling you what you need to work on. So if you don't have a little hand mirror in your studio, it's a great addition. Um, Mirror is also nice because it's like, hey, you didn't see this earlier. You didn't see some of this this problem here, or that you know, it's kind of that quick critique that you need sometimes. That whole area is a lot darker. Although I've got it kind of a weird, due to my crazy Photoshop times of piecing together the various parts, there's a little bit there that's unexplained. Um, that's the that's probably the one disadvantage of kind of my method is I, I'll end up with these kind of in between spaces where a hand meets another spot and you know lines don't line up line up and you just encounter all sorts of interesting problems i don't know i'm, I'm gonna i think i'm gonna go ahead and pass on the rest of this i think it, it's uh it's working good enough for for what i need um and i'm gonna go ahead and switch gears I'm going to pull up here to where we were working before and I might have to do some scooting around a little bit. Let's see if we're starting to get there. Nope, not quite. I might try to adjust the exposure as well. Let's see. See if I can adjust the exposure on the camera just a little bit. But dimmer a little. Let's see. Okay, that's a little lighter now. Hopefully, we can kind of see what happens here. Um, Agnes, yeah. Sure. I the 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 whole uh, toxicity uh, question with the lavender spike oil is uh, that's that is a great question because it's uh I think it's it can definitely be really strong and it can be a little bit of an irritant. Um, whoops. Um, it can be a little bit of an irritant to the uh, the lungs. I think just the the overall scent is, is very powerful. Um, so, you know, probably even that is a sort of a thing to take it easy on. Um, so welcome to the stream. Uh, those of you who just joined, if you have questions, let me know. We're gonna, I'm gonna dive into this last hand and see, I've got about an hour, so I'm really gonna have to um, kind of cook 
get get it rolling, get it cooking, and let's see what happens. So I'm I'm kicking off, starting here, just kind of laying this little bit of shadow line that I see. Um, same for this underside. It's also a good idea to um, I'll just put in some of the blacks that are around it, especially on that dark side, and and that will let me know, you know, about how dark I need to go. So I realized I didn't do. Oh, too late now. Usually I like to oil out this area, but didn't do it. We're going on. We're just going for it. Be strong. I mean, maybe I'm not going for it. Let's see if I can get just a little bit of uh, my walnut oil. Just kind of rub it in. Areas that I'm about, about to work on. These will be just a couple of points to really help me see just how dark it is. I realize at this point you're not seeing what I'm working on, you're seeing the other hand. Um, I don't know if I have the ability to switch that out at the moment. Uh, I could. Let's see. All right. Moving! Never done this on the fly, so this will be kind of fun. I wish there was a way in which but a little hand tool would be nice. It doesn't exist for this as far as I know. So Okay, here we are. A nice open hand there. Yeah, look at that. Wow, it does just move around. It does its thing. That's amazing. Okay, getting back in position. Oh! But I feel like I'm gonna knock something over every time I do it. Uh, and these kind of darks here, I, I like to, I don't know if different people like to do different ways, but I'm, I like to work from my darks to my lights. So. It's raining. That rain <laughs> it's raining. I I hope the windshields are, you know, they're gonna be okay. I hope three new windshields. If you just joined, that's how many we replaced today. <laughs> and now they are getting rained upon. Well, like one and maybe one half of them. I think I did what I could. I'm going to shape this finger just a little better. There we go. Yeah, even even the painting phase is is obviously a drawing phase. Um, so you know, yeah, I have a drawing to more or less help me stay on track. But honestly, I've uh, I've got to uh, keep going. Raining, raining good, Wichita, Kansas. If you find yourself elsewhere in the world. It's coming down. 
might even be able to hear an occasional our next door neighbor even just got out of the chair and he's watching it <laughs> this dog nice I really like it though. I mean, say what you will about Kansas, and you will, uh, <laughs> and you can. Um, we see a lot of nice uh, thunderstorms in the summer. Uh, living living in the Central Plains, this you know warm, moist air comes up from the Gulf. The cool air comes across from the mountains, and it's just exciting. It's beautiful, it's peaceful for the most part. It seems like it behaves most times. Not always. In the summer of 2019. Is that the rainy one? Yeah. I mean, no, it's, May, well, May, well, May, May of 2019 was the, the really scary one for me. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like just rain that whole summer just mm -hmm. flooded everything. All right. Technical question, Art, yes. How do you set up your camera to face the painting without it getting in your way? tried all the ways and I still have a hard time filming and painting at the same time. Um, great question. Um, I, it is literally next to my head. Um, if I were to lean back here, I would hit it. Um, so it's, it's really tight in there. Um, and, uh, I, w I wish I could, uh, I guess I could, possibly be able to show kind of what, what the setup looks like. It's a little bit like uh, one of those um, don't trip the laser uh, games um, where you're trying to get through without uh, triggering the alarm in here. Um, so far so good. Yeah, we've knocked stuff over, that's for sure. Um, but, man. Serious. I'd be 100% okay with it if it hadn't been for the windshields. This is really kind of pink in here, so I wanted to pump that up a little bit. Calming down. Calming down. Calming down now, though. But for how long? So in my uh, time crunch here, I'm really just kind of going at this. So uh, if, you, if you just tuned in now, um, <clears throat> uh, you're going to kind of see this thing hopefully come up pretty quick. I'll really kind of work into it. Um, it's a little more blue than than red there, but. Just have to pretend like I'm back at the university and instructor was like, hey, you have 15 minutes to, to quickly describe what's in front of you. If you've ever been in those situations, you know what I'm feeling. 
So I'm just kind of dip into that, get too much of it on there, wipe it off some, jump around. Keep that line. I just want this one to be a little cooler. So I'll grab some my So when I'm moving quickly, you know, I'm yeah, see that that didn't do it. Sometimes I uh, this be a little lighter. There we go. A lot of times I, I like to just put it down and see what it's looking like, see how it's working or not. And then that can kind of And you know, I'm just using the same brush, wiping it off. Um, I'm a big limited palette person, so uh, I like to mix. I don't mind if the brush is dirty. Um, it just means I either use more color to get the one I want, or um, if I really need a reset, I'll just wipe it off. As, as uh, Agnes and I were speaking of earlier, I don't keep like an open can of solvents, like no mineral spirits around. Um, I just wipe my brushes off. Um, that's all in an attempt to just reduce toxicity in, in the studio environment. Okay. Yeah, I wish there was a trick to art. I could totally, um, um, if I if I nudge this a little bit, you'll see the camera move here. Yep, because that's right near my shoulder. Um, yeah, I it should probably be using mirrors, right? That's that's like like any good magician or illusionist. That's what I should say. You know, for if you're painting, you know, you should consider yourself an illusionist. Because so you're, 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 at least in the representational world, you're, you're attempting to make a space um, out of something that's two-dimensional and requires some level of... It's going to sound really cheesy when I say it. Some, some level of magic. these kind of pinky fingers. Not so orange, it wants some, maybe a little cooler, but lighter. So what we need is um, our, uh, our alizarin crimson here. Uh, it creates that kind of nice bluish, um, or cooler red. I mean, this is a nice, I mean, it's hard, it's gonna be hard to see as small as it does on the screen, but you know, if kind of drug this CAD red down 
and but on this side of it is a little bit of a, a ultramarine mixed with it. Here's when it's a little more yellowy, when it has some of the yellows mixed with it. And here is that edge here where we turn that a little more blue with uh, cerulean, or no, no, gosh, uh, alizarin. And it just needs to be lighter. Lighter still. Dip it in just a little bit. Still want some of that there. Okay, that's a good start. This is kind of nice, this section here, the two, the ring finger and the middle finger, they just um, they practically just run together. And those, those lost edges are, you know, every, those are what I really love to, to play up. You kind of saw it in the, uh, the hand earlier and it's, it, you know, the, that's what we really see, whether we kind of think about it or not. Our eyes, a lot of things just kind of run together and don't make sense anymore. Um, but because we're kind of in reality, we, we readily accept it when, you know, maybe it's like, well, it didn't really, it doesn't really work. Um, our, our eyes are finishing what our brain can't quite comprehend. That's the, those are exciting areas for, for painting. Yeah, I wish the, the color on the video looks a little dull. Um, it, too, it was earlier, it was a little too contrasty. It made some adjustments and so um, kind of missing out on some of the more intense coloration that's, that's going on here. I uh, wish, wish I could share that better. So, so art there, there lies in my, uh, my, these, the problems that I have, I'm like, oh, you know, I want a little more, uh, accurate, uh, color and things like that. So I'm, so I, that's where I have my struggles in this process. just barely falls on these and I'm gonna want to try to get that side of each of those each of those fingers down here than I have um and you know just kind of describing each one of these little areas here. letting the thunder roll right there. Um, letting the uh, the ground layer, which is this just kind of brown here that I've started off with before I even began, letting that be. 
and letting that kind of be some of the darks that I need in that area at the time uh, while I continue to work on it. And truthfully, the, the quicker I get to kind of this spot, um, the better off. I think it goes in general. Some of these areas that are just a little intensely red. Put in some of those shapes. Some areas that are that are dark under here that are hard to make out. I just I just even can't make them out in my in my source material. So um, it's just in that case, I know those areas are darker, but I'm gonna a lot of painting is trusting what you know um, not always what you're looking at can can tell you and you know I know that I'm gonna need something dark on the underneath side of that even though this uh, fabric here will be it's very deep dark red um, still need something to kind of turn that form. See you, my friend. At some point, I do have to begin, you know, getting at this smaller brush and following some of these, being a little more specific, um, and you notice I mostly save. Um, this sort of work, this edge work, for you know the smaller brush. I don't. You know, I'm not really. I'm as as much as I can. I'm gonna stick to using you know my, my sixes, my fours. Um, I. As I I like thinking and painting in terms of planes of color and not line. You know, we're not, we're no longer drawing. Um, I want planes of color. So. Well, that was really intense. Sometimes you don't realize what's on the brush. You're like, oh. The downside of using nearly the same brush all the time.
did want to extend this palm just a little bit. Kind of had a funny angle. It wasn't so bad, but it's one of those things that a, a painting, of course, rests on how the viewer approaches it. So the viewer comes to it. Um, nothing sticks out weird. Uh, it's readily accepted. Um, and then it's fine. If there's something, even if you're like, well, hey, that's how it was in li at life. Um, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way it ought to finish. Um, but that you'll want to make some adjustments in order to um, really get it right. So that, it, so that when the viewer sees it, whenever they see it, uh, without you there, because chances are you're not going to be there. I'm not, I'm not planning on sticking around forever. Um, so at some point, the painting has to uh, stand on its own. And when it does, um, I don't want them... Of course, the burden of proof rests on us as the painters. Uh, I don't want them saying, oh, I see what happened there. That's uh, that's just bad painting, bad drawing. Um, so a lot of times I'm I'm finishing things out in a way that is maybe like overtelling the story, but at least I I won't be uh, misunderstood later, I guess. His hand feels just a little, you just need to carry it out just a little more. It's kind of in one of those in-between spaces where if it extends just a bit more, it kind of gets it out of that weird in between space where is the hand at an angle? Is it open directly? And those are the sort of questions I I hope future viewers won't have to be like, well, what's, what's actually happening there? So I'm still kind of bouncing around. Um, I'm gonna have to really get down to it here and work on these edges with a smaller brush. I do everything I can to avoid it. Uh, you know, using the tip of my filbert here. Um, so doing just about everything I can to, uh, to get it right. What's up, bud? Are you live streaming right now? I am. I just wanted to know, because Mirror Window watched something. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. We, <laughs> we don't, uh, we don't, we don't watch Disney Plus when Dad's live streaming. That's the rule. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, it's, it's really hard. It's hard growing up. This is hard life.
can rake away some of the paint, the harder stroke, and create some of the palm of the hand, um, just with kind of a motion like this. Okay, I think I've just about done everything I can do for really having to buckle down. And describe all of these. I say I do about everything I can to avoid that point. Kind of like using using white, I do just about all I can in my mixing to avoid going to white, but eventually it has to happen. Um, but until, until that point, I will, I will fight it. I guess it's going to block in time. Okay, I feel like that's probably about as far as I'm going to go. There's some areas that are very light in this hand. So I'll, since I know I'm mixing directly into my color, you know, I don't mind, you know, going in here, pulling directly from the a pile of uh, lead white and just kind of working working it into what's there and the same thing I'll carry it down just a little farther We did some nice shape. Really happy with how that turned out. It's just a little more open now. Cat hair snuck in there. Cats, cats, getting your hair in my painting. Feel free to drop a question off if you'd like. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna keep trying to guess who's still on and who's still and who's still here and who hasn't heard me say the same thing over and over again and <laughs> also too if you don't feel comfortable doing it in the live chat you can drop it off in a comment later um, and I will get to it uh, so see this is a 
you know, I'm, I'm modeling this area here, but I'm moving the paint stroke, you know, in this way. I'm kind of contouring because uh, I want this really this whole thumb area here to just kind of cut a little come forward. And it's a subtle thing that happens when when you just work uh, work with the the stroke in that way. Even up here. So this, what that makes this do is that it makes it move this way. So you can think a lot about like how to create space in your paintings simply by. Um, there's just so many ways. Uh, you can do it by light, right? So light comes forward, dark recedes. Um, you can do it with color intensity, chroma. So light, you know, colors that are intense, you know, rich color tends to come forward. Colors that are more neutral um, tend to uh, recede. Temperature does the same thing. So warm colors come forward, cool colors recede. Um, and then you can even use your stroke as well um, to get that extra bit of information just to continue to create space, create space. All of these things working together. Um, to make a great painting. Kind of nice, each one of these fingers has just a little bit of a I like kind of right in here. And this will be hard to really see. This edge is going to be a tough one on this side. Um, I do have some red mixed together that you can probably see above that I just use to reshape some of the shadows and just some of the drawing uh, in the hand from earlier today. Um, yeah, feel free uh, at any time. Don't, don't let me stop you. Um, you're welcome to swing by. I mean, this is going to be here. Um, I've got uh, the video where I mixed all these skin tones that, that released yesterday. You can just swing by, check that out. Um, and um, yeah. It's uh, and then and then whew, the rest of the live stream from earlier today, we have been hard at work today. Let's see, Art got a question. Awesome, I get impatient when I paint. Oh yes, me too. Sometimes I just want to finish, when uh, to finish which affects the painting quality. Yeah, uh, how do you stay patient? Yeah, whew. really give each spot enough time. Um. So I, I get impatient too. Um, mostly mine comes in like areas where I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I realize the amount of effort that is going to be uh, taken in a certain area. So I'll just kind of avoid it for about as long as I can. Uh, and the hands, it's, it's oftentimes these fingers, you know, like I really need to get the thickness um, out here farther um, and so uh, I like I'll avoid that step <laughs> just knowing it's kind of sitting out there um, but for me each part is done when it works so if it's working uh, I, you know I think of think of like John Singer Sargent where um, you know, d different people say different things about the, his method and the way he worked and okay, whatever. I mean, if I, I, so I could be totally wrong about this, but I just, I call the look of his work just economy of brushstroke. And it, like he used each one uh, as needed. And then when it worked, it just looks like he was like, all right, I'm out. And I'm, I'm kind of the same way. So, 
I'm working through these fingers, yes, but at some point they're gonna work and I keep moving around, hunting, hunting little, little changes, little things I wanna make uh, happen that I see, because I'm just, I'm just on the lookout for what's that next little bit of detail that I missed um, still wanting to not not describe it completely because you know I want it to still be a painting um, but I also really want it to work and you know there's there's sort of two ways for that to happen either I just can battle it out and sometimes when I go too far and I really want to change something and it's it's not working for whatever reason I can battle it out. And those are maybe the most impatient moments where I'm like, okay, fine. Um, I've got to wrestle this thing to the ground because it's not quite there yet. And I would rather just kind of keep moving, um, look, look at the hand as a whole and say, you know, where, where are the weakest points? So right now the fingers are kind of the weakest point. And so I know that that needs attention. And so I just kind of keep, keep working and this will, this will sound a little mystical here, but that's all right. Uh, the painting kind of tells me when it's done and, um, and when it's done, it's done. And I don't, I don't like to do it anymore um, because oftentimes something is working and to, uh, to keep working is actually the is is the enemy, um, and I'm very likely to kind of ruin some of the fine work work that was accomplished. Um, so, the, the more the thing that I struggle with, and maybe this is kind of along the lines of what you were asking, um, is feeling enthusiastic about a painting in the middle of it. Um, it doesn't matter how many times I've made a painting every time. I mean, every time I go through, I just, I have now just called it the dark place. Each painting gets this, this time frame that I just really hate it. And it's usually the point where I've put a lot of effort in, but I'm not quite seeing the reward yet. And, uh, all I have to do is just keep painting. And eventually, all of a sudden, that, uh, that time passes. But that, that's kind of my worst, worst point. Um, I wouldn't call myself impatient as as much uh, maybe lazy, where I was like, oh, I don't, I want that to be described in a few strokes rather than, um, uh, you know, an hour of uh, kind of fighting it to make it work. And, and I think that's good again, cause like I said, we want to make a painting, not a photograph. So finding that sweet space uh, in between. So that works is, is kind of always is key for me. Ah, you're getting the rain too, Agnes. All right taking my time when, when I'm painting. Oh, I, I, I'm glad this looks like taking my time. I feel like I'm kind of rushed, <laughs> um, but thanks. All right, and uh, hi, Georgia, it's good to see you. I have the same problem with patience and we are getting thunder boomers. Oh, in spring right now, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, must be happening everywhere. At least everywhere in uh, the, uh, the central Central United States, anyway. But good to have you on, Georgia. And even that little mark that I made there just did something for me to make me like it more. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's the kind of thing that happens. Like, oh, I, I like this more now than I did. Um, and so I, I realize that that's, I guess maybe that's the goal at this point or painting in general is like, 
every little step of the way is that next move the thing that uh, gets me more amiable toward the work um, because there's definitely a lot of time in which uh, you know I don't um, I'm not happy with where it is and so uh, these little decisions are I hope building up and making a case for like oh yeah no 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 this is this is working and I'm, I'm getting closer uh, we're just not quite there yet and and this stage of kind of moving past the block in to uh, the time of uh, refinement, but always trying to not go too far. So, and really, we'll we'll see how how it shakes out in the end. It's always always an adventure. Too for me working. Um, on a bigger piece like this. Obviously I can't simultaneously build the piece and something has to be neglected while I work on something else. And you know, time-wise it just works better for me to, if I'm gonna mix a batch of skin tones, to begin using, um, continue using that color. Yeah, if you, if you watch the video from yesterday, you'll see um, to see me take about 30 minutes or so just mixing some of the general skin tone colors that I see present. And yeah, I, I, I want to use those for a couple of days, uh, you know, it's a time saver and um, also helps with consistency. But nice thing about a limited palette, uh, so using as few tube colors. So here, here's my tube colors just up here, if that's it. Uh, working with nine right now. Um, uh, I always feel like, uh, I can't go, I can't go too far off. There, it was always a mix of these, um, and that mix may be slightly different, um, depending on, uh, where I am in the process, but it just, it can't change too over dramatically. Uh, whereas you got a lot of tube colors out, you might see a wacky phthalo green and something and um, some of those other synthetic uh, pigments that are just really strong and can can kind of be in one area but not in another and just kind of steal the unity of your of your painting so I'm a big fan huge fan of the limited palette Okay, I need to lighten up and shade the kind of underside of the fingers is what I really need to do next. And I've got uh, about 20-ish minutes or so left, so. So at this point, I'm looking back and forth quite a bit uh, I think the hand is a lot lighter in the source material than, and and I and I am having some of the color. I know it's really hard to see uh, the video from the file, and but uh, the the color is happening there. It doesn't doesn't really look like it on the video, but the color is is coming along, and and it is a lot warmer less dead looking. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to play around uh, quite a bit with things until, until I get kind of the, the overall look. Um, kind of what I'm seeing to what the stream is showing.
And yeah, this is working. It's working a lot better. I, I need, still need some more lighter, just a little lighter, a little more intense, warm, open hand. Letting it get uh, a little darker, a little redder toward the tips. with how it's going. A lot of times I'm not, believe me. I'm pulling some really warm um, darks for some of these, these edges where they will decay into the will be the space below um, where you just kind of can't see that edge anymore. Let's work on these just slightly. Hint at the that fingernail underneath there. I don't want to do too much, partially because I'm just I'm liking how it's going. That's that's the there's the other enemy right there. You're kind of satisfied. You're like oh that's pretty good. I don't know if it could. Don't know if it'll get better. And and then and I'm not not touching it. I struggle with that a lot. And I think the, the the fear is that it will then turn into this really delicate game of of rendering and you know I want to keep keep it quick and keep it honest. Nice thing too is this is another. If I if I really needed to kind of go back in and describe certain changes, you know, I could. I can use the walnut walnut oil gel. I can go right back over the top of some of these areas, and. Um, I can just. Tilt the color a little bit if I need to later on. It's hard though to see like this this play this what I'm working on in kind of a, a vacuum because it's all by itself. You're not seeing the entire composition. 
And so this little section that's being worked on may be important to the whole, but maybe that's not really where the eye goes as much. It could be a little more of a supporting cast. Hands and faces generally are not supporting cast, but sometimes they're just not as important. Kind of depends. All right. I'm going to get out a little brush here. Uh, so yes, let's see, I see some more questions coming. Cool. Um, do I have an inner constant critique voice? E yeah, for sure. Uh, all the time. Um, even after the fact, painting done, f varnish framed. Yeah, always. So how do I keep it silent? Um, yeah, yeah, I get, I get that. Um, gets in the way of making us lose that inner creative energy. Sure. Um, well, you, you do have to be really hard <laughs> on yourself, especially, you know, if, uh, if you want it to be exceptional, um, and yeah, I, I don't know how, what else to say, except at some point, um, you have to quit and uh, here's uh, here's my kind of if, if you've heard me say this before forgive me um, I, I like this uh, sometimes you just have to get mo all right and uh, get mo uh, it's don't is G E T M O okay so that, and that stands for good enough to move on and sometimes that's really where you have to be. Like, no, no, this, this is good. It's good enough to move on. Um, and that saying, I think, is, is helpful to me at times where I want to... Um, I was like, no, 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 that needs a little more refinement. And this will sound probably a little too uh, businessy. Uh, for, for an artist, but um, the the rate of return uh, and, the, and the net return on, so so I've, I've made this hand here. If I spent another two hours on this hand, um, very few people would notice. <laughs> uh, and and I'm not and not that it's about what people are noticing or not, but it's just that. Um, uh, let me explain it a different way. Like, uh, say you spend um, two hundred dollars on a pair of shoes. Um, that sounds like a lot, and uh, because they're supposed to be, you know, extremely comfortable, um, and uh, you know, you have an option of like buying a five hundred pair of five hundred pair dollar uh, five hundred pair. $500 pair of shoes. And, and so like, uh, you're probably not going to feel all that much difference in comfort or quality between the 200 and the 500, but I guarantee you, you're, you're going to feel a, a great deal of difference, uh, in your shoe quality from like a $40 pair of shoes to a $200 pair of shoes. And so I think about it a little bit like that when I'm painting, um, there is just, a, there's a, it's like a graph, right? All of the energy I'm putting into it finally gets to a point and then I could keep going, but really it's, uh, I'm not sure what mathematical equation that is. Maybe Agnes can help me, um, where it gets up here and then just really levels off. It, yeah, I can still continue to get better, um, but that is gonna be so negligible as to maybe not even be worth it uh, to kind of put your time into. Uh, and I do have to think a lot about my time because um, I'm going to stop here shortly, but also because, um, you know, I'm a family man and uh, I'll, I, I have to stop somewhere. And so there's always kind of a, yep, hey, that's good. That's going to work. Um, and I guess that's kind of how I shut off the critique uh, internally by saying, you know what, that is good enough to move on. And, uh, you know, 
let's get to that next area. Let's uh, let's finish this piece, and um, and not get too uh, caught up or too um, hung up on a certain area. Or, uh, but yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll keep critiquing it well after the fact. Uh, I'll I'll look at pieces years later, and I'm like, mm, yeah, I should have done that. Ooh, no, yep, yeah, that's that could have been better. Um, so I, I don't know that it ever really turns off, but there are times and spaces where it's good enough to move on. And Agnes, I saw you had a question. Um, what walnut oil gel are you mentioning? Um, I will share it right here. It's, uh, it's Rublev colors from natural pigments. Um, so it's a solvent free uh, medium of walnut oil, gel medium of walnut oil. It's good stuff. Uh, can cause fires, you know, that whole oil, oily rag thing. Um, but, uh, it's good. I, I, I like it. Um, and, and it's, uh, you know, solvent free, which, you know, we've had a lot of conversation about that today. It is a, okay. Danielle, Danielle Chrysa, Chrysa, okay, cool. Uh, thanks, thanks for the book recommend. Yeah, and and I guess that's uh, Agnes. That's actually a really good point. Um, now we're probably getting into uh, waters that you know, really you should have a counselor or a therapist for. <laughs> Like, um, and, and, uh, you know, always would recommend, recommend that. Um, sometimes I just have to think about it in terms of, um, uh, uh, I'm, I am only have so much time, uh, in this, pl on this planet and, uh, you know, how do I want to spend it? And sometimes it's just like, Hey, that's good enough. I'm going to go, uh, play with the kids for the night. And I always try to stop at five each day and I have to stop a little earlier today because my wife uh, teaches yoga and uh, she has to leave to teach her class. So it'll be an earlier stopping point, but man, I, I'm pumped. Today, um, I got some things done. Um, so I have to get a little bit excited about that and, and feel good. Maybe some of them are maybe a little looser than I would have liked, or maybe not quite to um, my complete and uh, high, crazy perfectionist uh, standard. Oof. Yeah, see, I need to go to a, a counselor too. Um, but it at least it's, uh, you know, we, we, we got somewhere and we got a lot done. And I can I can be happy about that. Hey, uh, and tomorrow um, I'm probably gonna try I think to work on uh, the uh, portrait of of Mary up there uh, that we can't quite see right now, and so yeah, that'll be kind of a day long thing. Most of these colors will probably be shot by then. So I'll need to start over. Um, but yeah, we'll do some more uh, skin tone work and um, see how it turns out. I, I, I think this is really nearly there. Here's, here's, here's my other critic. If, if, I, if my voice wasn't hard enough, I always get out uh, the, um, the hand mirror and Take a look. What does the hand mirror say? Shows me something anyway. Uh, this area over here is kind of kind of a harder edge. Looks a little strange. I need to. So yeah, 
something kind of said, hey, this just needs a little bit of attention. This section. It's really a hard line. Maybe it's a little too thick, maybe. And then that's the battle. Yep. And and it so you can remember the really uh crazy word you can just say get mo. I need to get mo. Get mo. Get mo. Good enough to move on. Woo. Vince told me to get mo. It's a little bluer, blue, green, see if we can take some of those. Under the skin, cooler colors here. Again, probably not perceptible in this uh, on camera, but the edge over there, it's just not dark enough. Red. a little more angular. This, this, uh, I don't know. We're, here's where we're, you know, it was probably good enough to move on. So now I'm getting into the danger zone. You know, how much, how much more work do I want to give myself? <laughs> I think that was okay. That was an okay move. <laughs> I'm gonna make this a little bluer, cooler the other side here. still kind of hunting around a little bit, but I think for the most part, I'd have to say this is it. And I also heard the car door, <laughs> which means I've got just a few minutes uh, to, to get downstairs and be and uh, switch, uh, put on my dad costume. So uh, thanks very much for being here today. And uh, thanks for watching. And if you, again, have any questions later on, drop them off. Be glad to assist uh, in your art making in any way I can. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, the best to you. And I hope it doesn't storm too bad wherever you are. Uh, God bless.